black holes. So black holes are the last stage of the most massive stars. So these are the stars that have an initial mass greater than the 40 solar masses. So essentially we're talking about O stars, the fate of an O star. Now recall with our high mass stars, we get to the point where the core is composed of iron, and iron not being able to fuse is going to collapse down. And as it collapses down, uh, in the case of a neutron star, it's stopped by neutrons. Uh, in the case of a black hole, nothing stops the collapse. Because the mass is too high. In this case, we've, it's a mass greater than three solar masses is going to collapse down and never stop. So essentially we're picturing all the mass in a single point. So you've got uh, more than three solar masses, that's supposed to be greater than there, three solar masses compressed to a single point. And that's really impossible to imagine. And by a single point, I mean, I draw that little dot, that dot's too big. It's an insanely small space that is holding all of this mass. And it doesn't matter how much mass you dump into it, it's still a single point. It doesn't get any bigger. So the only way I can wrap my brain around that is to imagine that the mass has been converted to energy so that you're not really dealing with matter that takes up space just uh, a concentration of energy and that energy has mass. So we call them black holes. Why? Why are they called black holes? Well there's two ways to picture this and one way is using classical physics when you are on an object, you have to go a certain speed to break free from gravity. And that speed is called escape velocity. And that is going to depend on the mass and size of what you're on. Because recall, Gravity depends upon mass and distance, and um, when you're on a planet or star, that distance is to the center. So if it's smaller, you're closer to the center, gravity is stronger, and if it's more massive, then gravity is stronger. So we're dealing with a lot of mass, and you're right there. Uh, basically right at the center, almost a distance of zero. So that much mass, that small of a size, you have to go faster than light to escape. And according to Einstein, nothing goes faster than the speed of light. So you can't escape, and even light is not going fast enough to escape. So that's one way of picturing what's happening in a black hole. The other way comes from Einstein and relativity. Einstein says that mass curves space. 
and time, which he combined together to call space-time. And a black hole, in this way of thinking about it, essentially curves space back on itself. So if you are in your black hole, no matter what route you take, you will come back to where you started. You can never escape. There is no way out. All the routes in space curve back to where you started. And so it doesn't matter how fast you're going, it's just the fact that all routes come back to where you start. Either way, light's not coming out of a black hole, so we can't directly see a black hole. The structure of a black hole is fairly simple. Uh, it's two main parts. At the center is the singularity. So that's where all the mass is. And this doesn't change size, even if more mass is added. because it keeps getting compressed down to a point. So it's always a single point. And that's why it's called a singularity. It's one single point. Surrounding it is what's called the event horizon. So this is kind of your point of no return. Um, outside of the event horizon, light can get away. Inside, it all goes back, all your paths go back to your starting point. So that is considered the boundary of a black hole. How big the event horizon is was first determined by this guy, Carl Schwarzschild. And so now we call it the Schwarzschild radius. And it's based upon the mass of the singularity. And essentially the bigger the mass, the bigger the event horizon. So as you can see here, uh, kind of our smallest possible black hole has a mass of three solar masses. The event horizon has a radius of nine kilometers. That's about 4.5 miles. That's really small in space, 4.5 miles. That's uh, less than the distance from the surface of the Earth to the top of our atmosphere. So we're talking really, really tiny distance. A uh, bigger black hole, of course, bigger radius, but still 90 kilometers. We're looking at 45 miles. Still not very big. 100,000 solar masses. This would start getting into the realm of what's called a supermassive black hole. They can get much bigger than that into the millions of solar masses. 300,000 kilometers. Sounds like a lot, right? It's 150,000 miles. That's smaller than the distance whoops, from the Earth to the Moon. So again, even the biggest black holes uh, their extent as far as the event horizon is concerned is not that big. So, you know, this vision of black holes being these giant things sucking up objects around them is actually very inaccurate because the region where you can't get out is relatively small. It's not that hard to avoid 
a black hole, even a supermassive black hole, is relatively easy to avoid.